everyone, I'm Katie Snap, And I'm Carol White. We're bringing to you another tip for women in leadership, how to manage yourself better. How to manage everything better. Life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. <laughs> okay, and this topic. This topic today is a, a good topic for women. Dreaded conversations. The word dreaded, what does that do for you? Yeah. <laughs> it, it's very self-descriptive, isn't sure it? Sure it is. Because yeah. we all have those sort of dreaded conversations. We thought we'd give you a few ideas for how to best prepare for dreaded conversations. And basically what we're gonna to do today is give you the courage to make it happen. Oh, in a little pill. In a little pill. <laughs> Call now, 1-800. <laughs> hey, we, have, we have one of these, uh, a tip in one of our, one of the tips in our book happens to be about dreaded conversations. Dreaded conversations. Do mm -hmm. you have that in front of you? The tip? I don't have the tip in front of me. It's right there. <laughs> oh, I'll read it. Tough conversations are easy to avoid, especially if you have, have the reading glasses. To make them <laughs> have the courage to make them happen. Tough conversations are so easy to avoid. Oh. Do you ever do that? Oh, I always avoid. And oh I, I think we mentioned this at, at some point that one of the reasons Katie and I have gotten together at some point is because uh, she was coaching me through a dreaded conversation that I had to have. That's right. So, uh, so you know, in the end, if you can't do it, get a coach. Find someone to give you some courage. Yeah. A girlfriend, a coach, a glass of wine, li liquid <laughs> courage, right? So having the backbone to know that you've got to get into those situations, is it always a conversation that you necessarily need to have? You know, sometimes you're in a reactionary mode. You feel like the best thing to do is just confront somebody. Um, I would say be careful, step back, and really make sure that this is a conversation that has to be had. And you know it. I mean, you've, you've thought about it for maybe weeks, and you know it has to happen. What um, would be some of the reasons that you wouldn't want it to happen? Why would you avoid it? Why would you legitimately avoid it? Oh, I don't know that it's I don't know that it's ever legitimate if it's a conversation that has to happen. So, but I do know that there's a lot of fear behind it. Well, I'll give you an example of one that I think is legitimate to avoid it. If the personalities that are involved are no-win personalities, mm. like I don't want to I'm not going to categorize people as personality disorders, but we know when there's people that are so difficult to work with that you can't have a productive conversation. Mm -hmm. As my husband, Bobby, says, if it's doing nothing more than making you feel better, but you're not expecting the outcome to be any different, then maybe that's fine. Maybe it's still worth it to have it. Sure. But if you're not going to get anything out of it and you, you think that this person does not have the capacity to have a productive conversation, then maybe you just not have it. Then don't have it. Yeah, and, and so there's, there is that. But if you're, if you're walking around with this feeling inside of you that you really just have to get something done about this, then you have to have the conversation. For you, if nothing else. Right. Maybe not to straighten out the other person, but definitely to keep you sane and happy. Well, let's help you get a little bit prepared okay, for a so, conversation that's dreaded that you might need to have. So you're having to have this dreaded conversation, or I am. What okay, do you'll I do? be the... Conversationalist. <laughs> uh, first, consider how you would like to have the conversation. This is prep. How would you, you would like to have it initiated? Okay. So, and I know one of our tips, the, the tip for this is to write it down. So actually spend some time thinking about how this conversation is going to start. You'll never know how it's going to end or what how it's going to go. So at least prepare for how it's going to start, right? I would say go as far as to script it. Yes, the um, beginning, right? Jack, I would like to have a conversation with you about something that happened recently. Or sometimes putting your heart out on the line. Um, Jack, I've been dreading talking to you about something because for some reason it scares me. Can you help me walk through it? No, that's a good way to put it. I mean, you know, it's just letting people know, I've dreaded, I've dreaded this conversation and I'm hoping that we can get through it without problem. killing each other. <laughs> <laughs> so that helps. Think about the scripting for the entree. And if you can get the entree started on the right foot, you're more likely to have the rest be go well. Smoothly. Yeah. A non confrontational start of some point is a is a good way of doing it. But it depends on the situation. If it's a boss, 
if it's a subordinate, if you have a level of authority where you really can say, I need to talk to you about something, sit down, you know, that level of authority is perfectly fine. Um, think about the goal of the outcome. What would you like to get out of the interaction? Agreement. Right, because if you don't know, yeah, yeah, there are there are different outcomes and different goals for for a conversation like this. So, and if you don't know what the end game is, then you could walk away from the conversation even more confused and dreaded than than you walked into it. So, I, I would say that that's where some of us have a problem is we think that by initiating a dreaded conversation, the you're going to get the re the problem resolved. That might be shooting too high. What if all mm. you need is to get it surfaced or all you need is for the other person to listen and then you come back or all you need is a temporary solution. That can help you set your expectations a little lower. Right. Which we at Skirt Strategies know that they're easier to achieve if your expectations are <laughs> <No. aren't. laughs> we, we like you to set them high. But, but in this case, if if the outcome is okay if you don't resolve everything, then make that a part of your goal. Make that a part of what you sit down and figure out. So you're figuring out, number one, what am I gonna say? What's gonna be the entree into this conversation? And number two, what is my goal for the conversation? And then the rest of the the rest of the conversation you can't really script. So now you've you've prepared, you've kind of gotten an entree, you've got a goal. Um, decide when you want to initiate this. Do you want it to be a casual, off-the-cuff conversation? Do you want it to be more formal? Do you want to call somebody into your office and shut the door? Is that is it that kind of a conversation? And it's okay if it is. Um, or is it something that you can say in the hallway uh, at passing? So figure that out. I had a conversation with my daughter yesterday on something that I had been meaning to tell her. It was a parenting thing. And um, she's not necessarily sensitive, but I wanted it to be at the right time so that it's timely information to pass on to her. I was kind of dreading it. Um, and it, I had been thinking about it, so I think what I had done is program my head a little bit to consider what is this conversation that I want to have. And suddenly it came up. It was a, a, a situation where a, a related topic came up, mm -hmm. and it just became a, this is perfect. So it was more off the cuff, but still somewhat mentally prepared. Right. So right. I liked that. Well, good. Uh, be ready for reaction. Know oh, that yes. the other person might have some sort of a reaction. They might get a little defensive, so be prepared. Yes. And, yeah. and know what your reaction to their reaction might be, but you're never going to know exactly how this is going to go. So don't, don't try to... Don't try to script it for both of you because you'll never know how they're, what their reaction is going to be. And then I'd say the last thing to remember is to be present. Stay with mm. your, your here and now. Don't get caught up in emotion. Be ready to be caught up in emotion if that's where your body takes you. But to be able to know that you're thinking clearly and you're straightforward can be. And you know, again, keep the end goal in mind. So if the end goal is getting yes. resolution, mm -hmm. keep that in mind as you're going through some emotional things because at, you know, your, your emotions come up here and if you're keeping something else in mind, no, I can get through this because I know the end goal is that we're going to work better together. Amen, sister. That's it. Okay, that's great. Yes. This is all good to talk about. You know, having somebody to talk about with it is, yes. is huge. Maybe therein lies the biggest difference between men and women is women like to talk things through. Right. We process it that way. We do process better than men. Men sometimes think that's crazy, but... I know, but it's not. It works for us. Yeah. So here at Skirt Strategies, we provide tips and training for women, their professional development. We'd love to have you follow us either free or as a monthly subscriber, which only costs you a teeny little bit of money. Tiny trainings, big results for a tiny little price of $8 a month. Join us if you would like to. In the very least, we'd like to have you a part of our tribe.